Hey, it's Rebecca here from Booster Prevention. I've been on a fact-finding mission in regard to gators and whether they're waterproof. Uh, so I've purchased nine gators to test. While I was thinking about water resistance, I thought it was also worth looking at breathability because a lot of these full shoe gators are made with desert ultramarathons in mind and in the desert it's more about keeping the fine sand out and the feet cool. So perhaps being waterproof at the same time is a bit much of an ask. Well, I can tell you that's not the case. There is one gator that satisfies both functions. So sit tight for the rainwater test first, then watch me make a deal of myself, figuring out which gators are breathable and which ones aren't. We're starting with the most complex little gator first. Now, I wasn't going to test these trail running gators at all because they can't possibly be waterproof enough to keep the feet dry during heavy rain river crossings and even running through wet grass and that's because they don't cover the mesh toe of your running shoe but I wanted to have a look at the materials in them anyway so they're in just for interest sake. This Montane Gator has three panels they call it a granite stretch soft shell fabric at the bottom a granite stretch kick patch at the inner ankle and a four-way stretch panel at the top plus they have overlock seams at the top and the bottom. Now all the panels are very water resistant, even that four way stretch panel, um, but water easily soaks through the seams at the top and the bottom, so that was a bit disappointing. Dirty Girl Gators are surprisingly water resistant, especially when you compare them to the next one from Ultra. The two have almost identical material compositions of lycra and polyester, yet the water resistance of this one is far superior. Not only does the water bead on these Dirty Girl Gators, but no matter how many times I rub it from the inside to encourage water to pass through, water just doesn't pass through, not even at the seams. I just want to let this demo play out so you can see for yourself. Compare that now to the Ultra Gator. This one has 82% polyester, Dirty Girl had 83, and this one has 18% lycra, Dirty Girl had 17. So that's pretty similar. However, the water barely needs any encouragement to pass through this Ultra Gator. Obviously not all polyesters and lycras are created equal. Here's our first full shoe gator. It's the popular My Race Kit Desert Gator, uh, made from Ripstop. See how these full shoe gators have the potential to keep the water out of the shoe completely because they cover the mesh toe box and they cover the eyelets, the tongue and the ankle, all the places where the water can get in. And they attach to the shoe with Velcro, which is glued and or sewn on by the, to the shoe by a cobbler. Water kind of beads on this gator, but it's a bit like a wet tent. You'll stay dry if you don't touch it but as soon as you touch it, the water seeps in. You can see it doesn't take much encouragement. Of course, the reinforced toe is completely waterproof and a really great feature to prevent tearing on rocky terrains. As for the cuff, it's much more water resistant than the ripstop material. 
the water beads but after a dozen or so rubs it's able to pass through This is the Rough Country Silkworm Knee-High Gaiter. It's also made from ripstop and performs on a par with the previous gaiter as far as water resistance is concerned. Unlike the previous gaiter, this one doesn't have a Velcro attachment to the shoe, but you can get this sewn on by a cobbler, just the same as all the others. It doesn't have a cuff, but it has two drawstrings instead. And obviously it protects your lower legs from the sun, wind, sand and insects. They're popular in the desert, but as you can see, the ripstop nylon just doesn't put up much of a fight against water. A single touch from underneath and the water passes through. Also from the Rough Country brand, this one is their trail running gaiter. It's made from polyamide and spandex and it has a double layer of material at the toe. That's not as sturdy as the toe cap compared to my race kits and a couple of the others coming up. But this is a full shoe gaiter with Velcro attachment to the shoe as they all are from here on in. And so it has the potential to keep the feet completely dry in wet conditions. So let's see how it performs. Unlike the ripstop gaiters, water beads really well on this gaiter. In fact, in trying to rub the water through to the other side, I was constantly chasing around my drops of water all around the place. I thought I'd better test the seams just to see if this was a weak point but they're not, the water still does not get through. I literally rubbed two to three hundred times from underneath and it was still watertight. After this test, I went to the bathroom to test it under a tap. I filled a little pocket with water and agitated it constantly. Still no water passed through. Finally, I held it against the spout and turned the tap on slowly. Well, water did seep through under that kind of pressure, demonstrating this gator isn't completely waterproof it's just very, very water resistant and very impressively so. I wonder what this means for breathability though. Does it also make it difficult for air to circulate? Well, we'll find out in a moment. I'll just let you watch the rest of this clip. Raid light desert gators have a double layer under that front grey panel. Water behaves a bit differently on this panel. 
It doesn't bead and it doesn't easily soak through. Instead, it disperses laterally to cover a large surface area. You would think that this would be bad in terms of moisture management. You would think that you just want it to bead and run off. But by spreading out, it means there's not so much of a concentration of water to soak through to the inner layer. That lateral dispersion, without too much soaking through, that'll facilitate evaporation as you run. You'll see the water from the underside in a second, but do you know what? I couldn't feel the wetness of it. I think it must have spread over the surface of that second layer too and resisted soaking through. This was kind of cool. See how the two layers are completely separate? However, the white side panels are single layers of material and while the water beads initially, after about 10 rubs from underneath, the water passes right through. And I have to say, the blue triangles actually help water pass through even faster as compared to the plain white material. The water doesn't even bead on these areas, it just goes straight through. Of course, the toe cap is completely waterproof. It extends about 30% further over the toes compared to the My Race Kit toe cap. As for the ankle cuff, it performs about the same as my race kits and the water beads nicely and takes some encouragement from the underside for it to pass through. All in all, this one's a bit of a mixed bag, in terms of water resistance anyway. And when I say that, I'm fully aware that water resistance may not be top of mind when designing a desert gator. AR desert gators from South Africa are obviously made for the desert. You can see water doesn't bead on this four-way stretch lycra. It spreads a little then passes through. These are single layer all the way around. The velcro attachment goes four-fifths of the way around the shoe. Uh, around the back of the heel it's elasticized, not velcro, and I'm assured that this still keeps the sand out exceptionally well. Finally, it's the impressive looking WAA Desert Gator. The most striking feature of this full shoe gator, apart from the colour, is the reinforced toe cap. It looks really tough and it extends about another 30% again over the toes compared to Raid Light. And unlike the others we've seen, this one has a Velcro strip down the front to make it easier to don and dock your shoes. I notice though, this one's a one size fits all, unlike most of the others that come in two, three or up to nine sizes. As for the water resistance of the yellow material, the water beads initially and takes about 20 or 30 rubs to pass through. It was a bit variable though, so I'll let this clip run through so you can have a good look. As for the ankle cuff, for some reason it was consistently easier to encourage the water to soak through here, even though there were two layers. Okay, let's gauge how breathable these gauges are while I make myself look silly. Here we go.
Okay, now it's important to remember that we've only looked at two properties of gaiters, water resistance and the ability for air to pass through. And we've done it in pretty simple terms. In reality, there's probably more sophisticated tests we could have done that mimic the real life situation. And there are other reasons why you might choose one gaiter over another. It could be tear resistance and durability on rocky terrain. It could be keeping the fine desert sand out. It could be length for leg protection. It could be based on heat reflection. Like, did you notice that the My Race Kit and the Silkworm Gators were white? Well, white reflects heat better than black, so your feet will be cooler in very hot, sunny conditions. So it all depends on your race. But the question I was looking to answer, because I've been asked this on more than one occasion, is which one is most likely to keep the feet dry in snow, rain, running through wet grass, puddles, and even creek and river crossings? Well, on that front, the Rough Country's trail running full shoe gator was clearly the best, according to my testing. Secondarily, I was interested to know, is water resistance and breathability mutually exclusive? And the answer is no. The Rough Country trail running gator was also very breathable. This combination was unique to the full shoe gator field. Dirty Girl Ankle Gators performed similarly well for water resistance and breathability. However, if you were serious about keeping your feet dry, these would be no good because water can still get through the mesh toe area of your running shoes. Is the Rough Country Trail Running Gator completely waterproof? Will it keep your feet completely dry in a prolonged wetting or full immersion scenario? Well, no, maybe not. It's not completely waterproof. And keep in mind the integrity of the Velcro on your shoe whether glued, sewn or both, will be a factor in keeping water out for any gaiter. But I hope this shines a bit of a light on gaiters and water resistance and breathability. So what's your experience with gaiters and their ability to keep your feet dry in very wet conditions? I'm really interested to hear. And I know for a fact that there are others out there keen for some advice too. So please feel free to comment and let us all know. Thanks so much for watching.